In the name of the one, the true, and the living God. Amen. 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 Be seated. Good morning. If you're here for the first time or visiting, we're so glad. Welcome. You are in a good and holy place. We have coffee at the church. <laughs> A long, long time ago, I um, went on a mission trip, and uh, it was a large group of uh, youth and several leaders to the bus. It's close to the border of Mexico. And our mission was uh, a very common, I think it still is in some ways, uh, part of a much bigger organization uh, to build a house we do it in one week, so uh, we got there the next morning, concrete was poured, and then there were uh, two by fours and construction, a roof, a tin roof. Uh, and over the course of a week, it was hard work. Uh, we built a house, sort of. <laughs> it was small, it was a concrete slab, two rooms. No plumbing. There was a power outlet in each room. Power was drawn from a pole nearby. I don't know if that was in conversation with the, the local power company or not. It didn't really seem to matter. And as we neared the end of the week, we had gotten to know, be in relationship with the family uh, who had waited and participated and helped with us. And the mom, mama, wanted to uh, give us some food. Now, this house, I have to say, was everything good and everything hard about what we sometimes understand as mission, right? Not one of us there would have found it a satisfactory, not one of us who had traveled there would have found it a satisfactory house to live in. It was hot. We didn't even gather inside. It was small. It was so small. It was something. It was not enough. It was enough for them. It was what we did. It was a box. It was a house. It was all of those things. And so uh, Mama disappeared and came back, and she had bought at great expense. We also had been in the grocery store that week, or at least I had been. Uh, she bought uh, a loaf of Wonder Bread and some mayonnaise. She brought some mayonnaise, I think, from where they were living, and some bologna, and wanted to give us food. There was not a cooler in sight. It was about 100 degrees. I'm worried about all sorts of things, and I was young enough to still harbor illusions about my own self, right? I don't like Wonder Bread, I didn't like mayonnaise then, bologna. I was young enough to harbor illusions about purity and calories and all sorts of things, right? As were the teenagers, most of them, from Boulder or the Western Slope around us. We couldn't, and we didn't say no. Now, this is our fifth week, friends, of reading the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Back in verses 1 through 21, Jesus fed 5,000 people from five loaves and two fish, and he and we have been talking about it ever since. Is it bread or is it flesh? Is it wine or is it blood? What does Jesus mean? Is this food that lasts or is it just a meal? If you were to look in the prayer book at page, one, or page 859, you would find yourself in the section that's called our catechism. And this, this flesh and blood, this wine, and the drink, this uh, gets a whole section in the catechism. Seven questions. 
Now, if you, uh, if you are complicated enough to earn a whole section in the catechism, you can also be sure that we're never going to sort it out on a Sunday morning. Just one, right? Today's gospel ends with some of the disciples, some of the people who had been following Jesus, leaving. He says, is, is this hard to hear? Does this offend you? And it is, I think, that big. Who are we? What are we as human beings? Everything human hungers, right? What is the nature of that hunger? Are, are you and I, are we just a collection of molecules and electrical synapses? that do things? Where do we get our meaning? What our meaning? What is the location of our soul? How are we in relationship with another body that is also a collection of molecules and electrical synapses and something else, right? It is that big. What does it mean? to be human and to be fed. And as we've been seeing through the Gospels, Jesus is where all of these things meet. He is both human and divine. He is both hope for a transformed world here, a world of enough, and also hope and life everlasting, and that something of us carries forward in the world and in the universe and in the being. Jesus is where all of those things meet, and he, they meet in the very reality where we are, a world of broken bodies and a broken world. Now, I've said this before. I think I've said it uh, every single Sunday in these last five. Our world is relentlessly hungry. And so, it turns out, are you and I, aren't we? We are bodies, and we are spirits, and we are together. This is a mystery, perhaps the mystery. How can something so big be so small? How can something so big, God feeds us, be, when we come forward to the altar rail, be so accessible, so tiny? Some might even say puny. That's what my notes say, but I wasn't brave enough to say it the first time. <laughs> so unrefined, what is that wafer? What is that cheap port we buy in big bottles? <laughs> so sufficient. How can it be both big and small? G.K. Chesterton wrote uh, famously in the 20th century. He said, it's not that Christianity has been tried and found wanting. It's that Christianity has been tried and found difficult. Not difficult, I don't think he meant in the sense of an obstacle course or a puzzle, or can you finally get the right knowledge, or can you, can you, can you get your prayers just right today? I dare you to ask yourself, and you, spoiler, no! <laughs> Second spoiler, God still loves you, right? Not difficult in that sense of an obstacle course, but how hard it is to truly love, to truly give, to truly receive, to truly offer from what God has given us. And then somehow in those mysterious moments of transformation, how easy it is to give, to love, to receive, to offer from what we have. Now I would add to Chesterton in the 21st century, we must be honest about the fact that sometimes the church has been tried 
and found hurtful, right? We live in an age where sometimes doctrine has been used to hurt more than it has been used to heal, used more to separate than to give lasting hope. And so we return to those words at the end of today. Jesus looks at those who are still around him and he says, do you also want to leave? And they say, Lord, where would we go? To whom would we go? We know that you are the Holy One of God. Sometimes in my life as a priest, when I make Holy Communion, as we do here, it is, it is remembering, right? Do this in remembrance of me. It is also remembering, putting back together of things that have fallen apart. Sometimes when I make that Communion, I look down at these tiny wafers, and I wonder, Perhaps like Nicodemus did back in the third chapter of John, how can this be? It is so small. And then I see how it becomes each of us food, enough for what we hunger for. It is a mystery. It is the mystery. In a hot border town in Mexico, more than two decades ago, that sandwich was delicious. I eat it again. Amen. Mm -hmm.